Late fall, early winter can be fantastic crankbait bites. So how do we know when this bite is gonna start taking place? Well, it's kind of simple. The top water bite is winding down. In fact, it's probably over at this point. Water temperatures, 53 degrees and dropping. And the flash mob junior bite is spotty at best. The types of lake we're focusing on are really structure lakes, but I'm gonna focus on lakes that have grass in them. Now what I call these are kind of like they're transitional lakes. They can be either a structure lake or a grass lake. Some examples of that are Gunnersville, Chickamauga, Champlain, Oneida, basically any natural lake across the country this will apply to and any structure lake that has grass this applies to. True rivers and tidal waters are a little bit different so I'm going to save those for another video. So here I have some maps in front of me to show you some very typical locations that I'm going to look for. The first one being is what I call main lake flats. Okay so what I have is I have a big flat that comes out it's very close to deep water and or the main river channel. Some of the areas that I'm going to concentrate on are steep sharp grass edges where the grass is vertical. I'm going to concentrate on inside swings on this flat. No flat's perfectly straight. There's going to be swings in it. So the inside swings, high percentage areas. The next thing I want to talk about is a step down area. You can see how the contour lines get farther apart here. So it kind of gradually breaks down like that and it offers you a step down in broken grass basically. Okay, uh, those are high percentage areas. And then of course, inside swings again. Um, this is what I look for on main lake flats. Now the, in, in some really large creek arms, this can translate also in the large creek arms because sometimes they'll fish as a separate lake themselves. Um, basically what I'm gonna do is when I come to the steep edges, I'm gonna parallel the grass. When I come to the step down areas, I'm gonna throw shallow and work my bait down the grass. I'm gonna step it down the grass. Um, inside swings, I'm gonna take percentage shots to make it go across the point and on the inside edge of the swing. That's kind of the way I would approach a main lake flat. The next structural element we got are called neck downs, and I love neck downs. Neck downs are where the lake will neck down in an area. You'll have the river channel down, you'll have some type of structure elements on both sides, it necks down, actually creating a funnel in between two structural elements. These are fantastic, fantastic late fall crankbait spots. Now in this situation, what you're gonna wanna look for, you'll see the bass. They'll either be suspending between here in the funnel zone, or they'll be relating to the edges of the structure. So what you wanna do in this situation is the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna approach it and on 2D sonar, I'm gonna have to go through the river channel on 2D sonar because I have to see what's below the boat, see how deep the fish are suspending. And then I know if they're over the river channel, I'm gonna cast right down the pipe, okay? If I see them on the structural edges, then I'm basically gonna structure fish these edges just like I normally would in the summertime. I'm gonna make the position so my bait is in the strike zone at all times. If grass is present, the better. Um, this is this other area that you're gonna look down in the neck down area because what's gonna happen here is the bass are gonna relate to this section or this section right here. These are your two high percentage sections in this area. Neck downs are phenomenal. Puts the bass within range, keeps them right in front of you at all times. All you have to pay attention to is are they suspending over the river channel or are they gravitating towards the grass edges or the structure. Now, another thing that I look for, and probably one of my favorite um, late fall, early winter areas, is what I call dead end guts. Now, this is a topographical map. It's showing you here, okay, that this would be the dead end gut. You have a structural element that comes all the way around. You have the main lake out here, very deep water adjacent to the gut, 
on a topographical map when you look at your topical graphical maps these could be difficult to find because there's a lot of things that look the same but here's a trick and this is what i always do whenever i'm on a lake in the summertime especially the grass lakes they have a dead giveaway now watch how easy this is let's say you're there in the summer you have matted vegetation now look what that matted vegetation just did it highlighted the gut for you so you can see it very easily this is how i look for my late winter spot my late fall early winter spots in the summertime when i'm on these lakes i'll see this and i know immediately that this is going to be a staging area and a holding area now when i approach these dead end guts, this is a little more tricky to fish because what you're gonna wanna do is, again, you have to find out where the fish are relating to in these dead end areas here. What I found is that a lot of times they will literally be right in this zone right here. This, it, they pull in there, they stack up over here, they got deep water right next to a transition a gra it'll be a gradual transition that comes up and then drops off. They can use that broken grass for feeding zones. They can funnel bait fish in there and the bait fish use these same areas. That's why they're so important this time of year. My crankbait choices are really super simple. What I'm using is I'm going to go with a DD-22, a Norman DD-22, a Norman Deep Little N, fat free shad number seven or a fat free shad number six. The reason being is my depth range is simple. I'm usually targeting eight to 20 feet deep. Those baits get me within the range. We're talking cold water periods. Most of the bass are suspending. So if I'm in that 20 foot stuff, these baits are running right over the top of them and they're coming up to feed on them. Pretty much how I handle my late fall early winter cranking scenario, it's kind of bulletproof. When you find them there, most of the time, you're within their wintering holding areas or very close, and it's setting you up to be on the fish during flash mob junior season.